Hey guys, it's me, Alta of Wisdom. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, today we are reviewing my latest Max for Life device. Uh, it is called Auto Simpler. Um, I'll trying a new approach, um, less of scripting of the presentation, so I try to do things as I go. And uh, hopefully it's gonna be a little bit more dynamic, um, maybe a little less boring than just me turning knobs and explaining how they work. Um, so uh, it might be a little bit erratic at some points. Uh, I may have to cut things a little bit if it's uh, if I'm blabbering too much or if I'm hesitating a little bit too much as well. Uh, so anyway, let's get on to it. All right, then uh, let's start with a sound check, just making sure that everything goes right. Um, now everything is silent, so that won't work. Yeah, now get some sound. Check in that it's working fine. Okay, cool then. Um, yeah, um, let's first, um, what is this thing about uh, and why did I do that uh, device? Um, actually, I, at some point I wanted to uh, sample some VST instruments um, so that I could use them, uh, use some of the notes, like one octave or two octave, and send that into onto my Digitact and uh, use the slice mode of it. Uh, so I could actually play these VSTs and shots directly into the into the Digitact as if I was working on the DAW. So I had some nice presets like from Diva and stuff. And uh, it was quite inconvenient to do that manually. I mean, I was using Logic, for example, and writing like the notes and then bouncing them, rendering them in place and then cutting them manually and send fix. So that was a little bit of a pain. Um, so I, I was looking around at some automatic sampling stuff and Logic has one. Uh, however, uh, for some reason I didn't, want, I didn't want to use it because I think it didn't cut things to the exact lens uh, because of the tail things. And that was a bit anno an annoyance because the Digitac need you to slice things with the exact same length, uh, no matter what the actual sample is. And uh, so I found a few things. Uh, most of them were not were uh, standalone software, or they were like very expensive, like more than one hundred dollars uh, or euro, you name it. And uh, so thought to myself that it wasn't worth the hassles because I didn't want to pay like uh, one half of what I paid for my Digitech just to get samples into it, and uh, spend could spend some time just helping. Uh, helping things and doing for myself. So I just digged a little bit into how to do that uh, in Max for Life. And I came with this solution, which is a, a full-fledged device, uh, which was initially quite simple, but it, of course, went into something bigger. Um, let's just have a simple look at, at it. Normally, I mean, I hope that the workflow is pretty simple and it comes with a full-fledged uh, user manual, which explains all the bits and bytes. So we're going to just look into it. Um, so uh, the first thing is, okay, you drop that into an empty track and uh, then you need, you can select it if you want to uh, sample a VST. So in that case, you can, uh, depending on the operating system, you can select one of the instruments which are located in, in your plugin folder. So in that case, I've just selected Spire. And then you can open the plugin. So you have a button oh, that's actually not Spire. I didn't probably reload, uh, just starting over. Let's say that maybe it's going to change. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So then uh, you get this thing. I'm going to turn the uh, uh, keyboard so I can just play with it. Uh, normally it should accept to play the notes. Um, yeah, so, so I'm playing on that, on that stuff. And um, then once you get this thing, uh, you can actually uh, test it. So what I'm doing here is that I'm going to decide uh, when I want to sample how long I want to simulate the note trigger, so the gate length, so how long, I mean like half a second, so this in that case, well, we're going to simulate that I'm just pushing the notes for half a second, and then how long should the release, the release happen? So how long am I waiting before, uh, considering I've 
done the sampling and I can test that using the test button. So as you can see it's just playing a note and it's following the gate lens. Go to the headphones just make sure that it's okay. Yeah I'm probably not into the right one so Oh. Yeah, probably sending to uh, a track which is actually listening. So this is this is the remote track. So I'm gonna turn that down. So as I told you, is it? Bit... Can you play? Sends only. Yeah, let's put that to the main. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway. So now back to my library. I'm gonna select whatever. So I'm listening and okay, the three seconds, three seconds and a half seems to be okay. <coughs> I don't need that long gate because it's a plug. And I can change either the velocity or the note which is tested to see for what I want to actually sample. It's interesting if you don't have a keyboard or the hat hand. So let's say I want to have both between. C0 or C1 maybe. I can as well check about velocities. So velocity in this case doesn't change anything. Yeah, it's not velocity sensitive. So let's say I'm gonna sample between C, C1 and maybe let's say C2. I don't want it to be too long. Okay, so that's gonna be C2. We got a full one octave. Uh, number of steps means that uh, if there is been say like C minus two to C seven, so that's a whole bunch of notes. You sometimes don't want to don't want to sample everything because you want to interpolate, uh, not to get into bigger files. So you can say, okay, I just want like uh, two notes. In that case, it's going to sample only C one and C two. Three notes would be C one, and in the middle is going to be G one and then C2, etc. So I'm going to say as many as possible, which means the full, the full range of notes. Uh, on the velocity range, I've just text, tested that there is no velocity, this thing is not velocity sensitive, so just one step, so it's going to push like 127 either way. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty good to go. Um, then, uh, I'm going to configure the output, so in that case, uh, where I want to have my samples go to, so let's open it, create uh, a folder. So that's the directory in which I'm going to put my samples. I'm going to name the sample, the, the preset. So oh. there we go. Then I can change uh, how I want to to name the file. So I got a, a bunch of fields. So we got a preset name, as I just meant, the MIDI note between 0 and 127. The note name, as in C1, uh, the velocity value, the gate length, and the release, or an empty field. So if I'm, for example, if I don't care about the release or the gate length, I can say empty. I don't care about that. I don't care about the velocity because it's uh, not meaningful whatsoever, so I'm going to get only preset name and MIDI note and not name. Then I can change the separator, by default there's a dash, and I'm pretty good to go. Yeah, the final thing is I can select uh, what type of file I want, to, I want to write out, so it can be something like a classic 16-bit wave uh, file, it can be 32 bits float, and it can go to different things like flag files, etc. On the options, you can normalize each, each sample to a certain value, uh, given that it's RMS. You can, and you can decide if you want to crop silence uh, of the, at the beginning or in the end at the sample. So as I told you, for the DigiTag, that doesn't make sense. What I want is the full sample. It's going to be the exact length. But you can say, uh, I want to remove anything which is below 160, uh, one, uh, minus 60 decibels at the end of my file, because it means that the note is over. So it's going to crop at the end. And I can do that as well in the beginning, which is interesting, especially if you want to 
uh, sample a hardware instrument. In that case, you have some. We can have some latency before the instrument starts sending actual audio. So we can say I want to I want to crop things uh, at the beginning, and so I make sure that I'm starting on point. But anyway, uh, I'm not doing that here. And let's just press play. So what it does is just uh, it, it's going to trigger the device and record the output. Yeah, sorry, I had to start over. I mean, I discovered a last minute bug in the naming, uh, not in the actual sampling, but in the naming of the output file. So. I wanted to correct that before going further. So let's start over and then open, exp open Spire, uh, select uh, a preset like this one. Uh, let's have a listen. Okay. Um, yeah, I need to shut that up. We'll use that later. Yeah, this is not velocity dependent, definitely. So let's start over. I mean, uh, from C1 to C2, just one step. Uh, all the notes, I want to sample all the notes. My preset name is that, and I'm just about to start stamp sample, and we'll have a, we'll catch up in like uh, two minutes. Yeah, I guess the reverb tail has been cut, so let's start over and change the release to uh, two seconds. I'm going to remove uh, what has been already recorded and start over. Probably a bit too short yet. Starting again. I could remove the reverb, but uh, I'd rather have it full. So let's say four seconds. Uh, I mean, I'm just gonna, anyway, I'm gonna fast forward this this part, and usually that's the part where you go and grab a coffee because if you want to spend, if you want to sample like five different velocities and two two octaves, and it's, it's gonna take a while. And we're done. So um, it's over. Let's go to the uh, output folder and have a look at what we got. Uh, as, as I've requested, uh, my naming convention has been followed. So we got the name of the preset, the no note number, the mini note, and the corresponding name. And I got that file at the end, which is named according to the folder. If I open that with a text editor, you see that it contains some uh, XML-like stuff. It's not really XML, but it's uh, some tag uh, tag file, which contains the name of my uh, samples and the key that they correspond to, and some velocity information. It's meant. Uh, it's a it's a standard file uh, format SFZ, which you can pretty much load in many different samplers, and actually it gives instruction to the sampler uh, what files to use to play and to which node they correspond and how, what velocity they should be used on. Um, and this is something you can, for example, load into Serum. So let's, in Serum 2, sorry, not Serum 1, but in Serum 2 you get that. So let's load an SFZ. So I go to my folder and just load that file. Uh, it's already loaded, so I need to probably uh, switch and let's switch to uh, Wavetable whatever, and let's <laughs> multi-sample, just, it already had it. And so what I got here is uh, an empty screen, which tells, but with some lines still telling me where there's some information. It's not really, really uh, simple to see. Uh, there's probably a way to show uh, the files, individual files. But uh, for now, it doesn't work like that. But if I just press on the one of the the corresponding notes, you see that it's actually playing my sample. And if I'm go outside of the parts which has been sampled, nothing's happening. So what I've actually done is sampling. It gives me the name which is actually playing. 
So it has read, it has read the, the proper information from the SFZ. And uh, if I click on the name, I can see the actual sample which is played. And where, what is actually playing. So it's, it's, it's being cut a little bit, a little bit. So in that case, usually you want to put an envelope to make sure that it's, uh, it's not cutting abruptly, something like that. Uh, I think that was three seconds, something, something like that. Oh, let's play. Yeah, I think it was three seconds. So I'm not uh, cutting too abruptly. Or I can put like hold for uh, 2.5 seconds. No, no many seconds. Like so, and then a decay for uh, 50 milliseconds going to zero. And that's gonna be cool. That's really up to you then to figure out how you want to use the sample, uh, maybe remove the reverb. And so that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's quite simple once you get uh, the grip of it. Uh, the other option which you, can, which you can use there is instead of sampling a VST, you can sample track. And uh, so what you do is tell the device where to get the audio from. So in that case, that's going to be my track two, which is named, uh, which is a, a Citron's bass, where you want to grab it and which bus you should send the MIDI. So that's a virtual uh, MIDI, uh, MIDI, MIDI uh, uh, bus. So you're going to send uh, information and notes to that virtual MIDI bus. And, and so you need uh, this corresponding divide which I'm providing which listens on the appropriate virtual MIDI bus, so it has to correspond to the number. And then uh, if I just press play, uh, you can just test, you see that it's actually sending C1 to that track, which of course doesn't make really sense because I think it's C4, which is the root note, which is, or maybe C3, let's have a look. And so you see it's actually playing. If I go to that track, it's actually receiving MIDI information and playing the note. So then, uh, exactly as I've done, I can just put a name, decide how I want to record that, and then it's going to generate both the sample files, the audio files, and the ESFZ. Uh, what's the purpose of that? Because I can load a VST, so why does it make sense? It makes sense because you want to, sometimes you want to you want to record a full processing, not only the VST, so instead of saying, okay, I want to have a VST and then uh, I'm going to process it and I'm going to render again uh, my samples. No, I'm going to put everything on that track. So I'll say I want to have an AQ compression, maybe some saturation and uh, EQ and whatever and whatnot. And I'm going to record all of that into, you know, I want to burn it directly into my, my base, in, into my sample. And so that's pretty convenient in that case. And this is not something you can do with uh, traditional auto sampler devices because usually what you can do in these is load one plugin or maybe a second plugin uh, with an effects section and it's not really convenient. Uh, you have workarounds like uh, loading some uh, things like me, uh, blue cat patchwork uh, elements or something which can host uh, a full mixing set but I mean, usually if you're in the process of just creating a track or creating stuff, you're directly you're already inside of, of your of your of the dough. So you have been tweaking your bass and you're happy with it. So you need you know that you're gonna want a run octave of that bass uh, with all the processing. So instead of saying okay, I'm gonna put eight notes and then record them and cut them and slide them into audio and then I'm going to drop them in manually into a sampler and uh, usually if you go to uh, Ableton sampler you need to put the notes where they want because it doesn't read the, the right notes uh, automatically so you have to put them at the right or the right place here you have something which will directly generate something which you can use in many different VSTs that can load SFZ and you can even use the WAV file if, that's, if you're up to that. So uh, I hope you find this useful. Uh, if it sucks, please let me know in the comments. And uh, if you have some suggestions or features or if you just encounter a bug, uh, which probably will happen, uh, just feel free to drop me a message, uh, whether here on the, the, the channel, on my Discord, if you're into it, uh, or an email. I mean, you probably have an email on which you can write down uh, messages to me uh, once you've purchased the software. So thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.